Welcome to the Brand Stand Woodwind Shop. There's some dents on trombone slides in the middle of the slide that you cannot get out with the mandrel. There are other tools that you can use to get those dents out. I'm going to use the set of 101 dent balls in conjunction with the trombone tuning slide dent ball driver to get the dents out where the mandrels cannot reach. In another video, I removed the dents from here to about here with the mandrels. The mandrels cannot reach around the curves on instruments, so that's what this tool is for. This tool can go around the curves and it can push the dent balls through the tubing. Dent balls work very well on tubing that is tapered and curved. This tubing starts out at a larger diameter and it tapers down to a smaller diameter. The dent balls can follow the curve of the instrument. The dent balls I'm going to need are going to be between here and here. It is possible I could need a smaller dent ball if the tubing is pushed in really far. I'm going to start with one a little bit larger than the smallest one that will fit in there. And I'm going to drop that in. And I believe it's stopping at that dent right there. The way to tell where it is is take a magnet. And this looks like a thumbtack, but it has a magnet on it. It made it up to here. Since the tubing is tapered, the dent balls are going to want to go through this tubing and then stop at a certain point when the inside diameter reaches the diameter of the dent ball. Uh, but when they hit dents along the way, they're going to want to stop. You put the dent ball in and it stops at a dent. Put the dent ball driver into the slide and then push down on it. If it does not go through, you can always just use the next size smaller on the dent balls. The dent ball that I was using was getting hung up on some of the larger dents and it wasn't making its way over to here. I want the dent ball to go up to where the dent is on the smallest part of the tubing. So I'm going to put this dent ball back and I'm going to go a few sizes smaller. I'm going to try this dent ball and see if that goes through. I'll take the magnet and see where the dent ball is. Okay, it's about right there. So I'm going to push that through again and I'll see how far it goes. The dent ball made it to here, and the smallest part of the tubing that has a dent is right over here. So I can go up a few sizes on that. What that's going to do is it's going to open up the dents a little bit along the way here. And then when it gets to here, it, since the dent ball is the same diameter as the inside of the tubing, it should push the dents out. The dent ball that I put in there has done its job. It opened up the tubing just a little bit more where the dents are. And now I need to get that dent ball out. So I'm going to take the same tool and put it in the smaller of the two tubes. And then I'm going to push the dent ball out and it will come out the other end. There is a method of doing this correctly so you don't hurt your hands. When you're pushing on the dent balls, they can be firmly in place. And then when they get unstuck, they can move very rapidly. And then your hands can slip on these tools. If the dent ball slips when you have your hand here, it can cut your hand on the tubing. Put one hand a little past the edge of the tubing. Put the tool right up to where the dent ball is. With the other hand, go just a little bit short of where your hand is. And then push it together like that. And then when, you're, when it slips, your hands are going to hit each other. And your hands will not hit the tubing. Another thing you can do is use the bench to block the tool. Put the end of the tool on the bench. Put one hand on the tube, the other hand right below it, and then push on the tool and pop the dent ball out. This dent ball has done its job, so I'm going to put it back. And I'm going to go up one size. Sometimes you can go up more sizes. Since the dent balls had a hard time getting pushed through, I'm going to go up just one size at a time, at least for now. Drop the dent ball in and push the dent ball through. and see where it is with the magnet it's right there which is beyond the dent the first part of the dent is right here and it's gone considerably beyond that so I might jump up two sizes this time I'm going to push this dent ball out and I'm going up two sizes And you just keep doing this until the dents are all out. And see where the dent ball is? Right up to here. How far the dent balls are going is moving farther and farther this way because they're getting larger and larger. Every time you put a dent ball through that's just a little bit larger, it's opening up the dents just that much more. I'm going to pull the dent ball out again.
I've got two sizes. I worked my way up on the sizes of dent balls till I got to where the first dent is. And you can see that the dent ball does not quite make it to the end of the dent. When there's a dent in an instrument, there's a low spot where the dent gets pushed in, but around the edges, the metal actually moves out. So there are some high spots here, and the reason why the dent ball is not going all the way through is because of those low and high spots. If you take the magnet and push, you can see how it wants to get off the high spot. So you can see that there's a high spot there, and the magnet wants to go to the lower spot. The way to take care of that high spot is to tap it down with a mallet. When you work on dents, you can use a dent hammer, and I have a set of five of these, but the one for trombone tuning slides is usually this one. Or you can use a rawhide mallet. The way to choose between the two, which one to use, is usually if there is a dent ball inside the instrument, you do not want the brass being between metal and metal. So you will use the rawhide mallet if there is metal inside of here. Now if you take the dent ball out, then you would usually use the dent hammer. With the magnet, I'm going to make a mental note of where the dent ball is, then pull that off, and I'm going to tap on the high spot. And then the other side of the dent has a high spot too. That did not get the dent out all the way, but now it will probably be able to push that dent ball in a little farther. Now I'm going to push on the tool, and it does feel like it has gone a little farther, probably about to the end of where the dent is. Yes, it's gone right up to the edge of the dent. So now I'm going to take this dent ball out and put the next size up into here. I ran into another dent right here, and this dent ball should have made it farther than that, about to right there. So I know that it's hung up on that dent. So again, I'm going to take the mallet and tap the dent. And then I'm going to push the dent ball through farther. Now that dent ball is going to where about where it should. Just keep doing that. Put the next size larger dent ball in, and if it stops at a dent, tap on the high spots around the dent, and then keep pushing. If you hit another dent, then tap on that one too, until it goes to about where it should. You know the dent ball is where it should be if there are no dents around it, but it is stopped. That means it's gotten wedged into the smallest part of the tubing where it can fit. I've gotten the dents out about as good as I can with the dent balls and the dent ball driving tool. Now I'm going to use the dent hammer and smooth out the dents a little bit more. So I'm finding the high spots and tamping them down. So this job is done. I could get it better than that, but that would require a lot of work and some relacquering. So this is as good as it's going to get. Look in the description below for links to where you can get these tools. I hope this video is helpful. Please subscribe for more band instrument repair videos. This is a difficult job and will take some practice. So if you'd like to do this, find some old trombones with dents in them. Practice getting the dents out and over time you will get better at this job.